Inside the last 18 minutes of the Sports Max Zone for this Wednesday, football is where we turn to ahead of Jamaica's upcoming Nations League battles with Honduras on Friday and Haiti on Tuesday. Members of the JFF, led by General Secretary Dennis Chung, gave an update on the organization's departmental improvements over the past year. These improvements ranged from financial human resource and general program development, but it is the latter which would be the most intriguing to fans of the sport. Assistant manager John Wall, who is in charge of player development, lamented the need for change in how players are developed island-wide. We want to expand our development more onto the ground, trying to reach players on an everyday basis as much as we can. Because as far as I'm concerned, every day that ends with a Y, you can train. And every month of the year, you can train and compete. Whereas in Jamaica, I'm not going to wrestle the elephant at all. The school system is here, and it's going to be here. School boy, school girl. But what happens to the 12-year-old who might be a little bit late developed? And she's a girl. Is she supposed to play against 19-year-olds? I think we have to look ourselves deep into the reflection mirror. What are we doing with the kids? Yeah, Wall also spoke on the Federation thinking beyond the next World Cup cycle. My concern is more not to qualify for the World Cup. My concern is how are we going to look at 2027? How are we going to look now that the girls did such a great World Cup? I'm always thinking ahead and looking at the future. That's my role. And playing that smart part is really important. And whatever we do with what we have, we need to maximize it. Because the talent is one thing. The work is a complete different thing. Yeah, positive signs from the JFF. Will the positivity spread onto the pitch? I guess that's the question that we would ask, Chapel. Yeah, listen, it, it's important what John Wall is speaking about because development um, for the future of the football program, not just in Jamaica, but right across the region, is important. And so he makes a very important point. It is interesting that he spoke about schoolboy football and the fact that schoolboy football or schoolgirls football for that matter mm -hmm. is very much here and is really in many ways the developmental platform for many of our youth players. You asked the question at the top of the show, Lance, whether that should actually be the case. Um, in my opinion, Systems will differ, and you have to find the system that works best um, for you. Mm -hmm. I think in the Caribbean context, definitely in the Jamaican context, the schoolboy football system is important. If you look at track and field, um, schools track and field has been an important aspect of the development of that sport and, and the quality and that comes through, and it is effective. Yes, so. Yes. My, 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 my thought process is that we need to figure out the reasons why that is the case um, and figure out how we make the schoolboy football product effective in also churning out high quality football talent as well. So yeah. I, yeah. Think, I think the point, point Wall was making though is that as far as the football is concerned, it doesn't have the age group strata in the same way that the track and field has because you have class four, class three, class two, and class one for girls, and in the boys, yeah, class yes, three, but, two, and one. And he but, was saying a 12 year old have, in yeah. football doesn't have this strata of going through the different developmental stages as that person would have if he or she were a track and field athlete. But not so, Lance, because you have U14 football, you have U16 football. Um, U14 is what in my day they called Pepsi, U16 yeah. they called Colts. I, 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 and, and I, then yeah, I know, you have but I the guess Manning he, and I the Costa Cup, which he, is the he, U19. He referenced a girl yes. in making his point. Well, the point. girl does not have that. Right. Yes, the and, girls and the do girls, not yeah. have that. So the, the girls, girls have one age The football program yes. is completely underdeveloped. Yes. And but, nowhere 
compares with the boys. True, but part yeah. of the reason for that is because when the schoolgirls competition started, you just did not have the numbers yes, to that's true. have them across that, age groups. That, that and true. so you started with um, essentially one age group. But I think mm. if the numbers grow, um, then the program in terms we'll of the competition solve, can solve also itself. grow. Yes. One of the other things Wall said, and I heard that narrative from Hal Grimson, the head coach of the Reggae Boys, when he first arrived for his first press conference, and it was a very, very important point. What happens after the World Cup cycle? Because we've seen in the case of the Jamaica Reggae Boys qualifying for France in 98 and Trinidad and Tobago qualifying for the 2006 World Cup finals in Germany, uh, both um, football um, structures haven't really benefited from the highs that they achieved in 98 and 2006. And uh, it speaks to an infrastructural problem or deficiency where, you know, uh, administrators focus on trying to qualify for World Cups without developing the base. So I think um, John Wall touched on a serious issue there that has to be tackled by not only the JFF but all football federations in the region. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> I agree totally, Lance. Break time. Back with more after this on The Zone. <laughs>